Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We are going to get started with our broadcast in just a couple minutes as we unveil the new Next Generation Material Handler 30 Material Handlers. Stay with us. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. We're going to get started with our broadcast here in just a minute. Hang tight. Hello and welcome to the Caterpillar Demonstration and Learning Center here in Edwards, Illinois. We're joining you live. My name is Jeff Muniz from Caterpillar Communications, and we're so glad you're joining us here today as we unveil the new next generation 
material handler from Caterpillar. We have an exciting hour ahead. You're going to hear from our worldwide product manager and his team who has brought this machine to life. It's going to be great. We're also going to hear from our product application specialists. They're going to tell you about all the great benefits as well as fantastic features that you'll find on this new machine, as well as give you a walk around so you can hop into the cab and really get to see and feel this machine, even though you're joining us virtually here today. Also, we're going to take you to a customer site where they got to put their hands and hop up into the cab and into this new machine and get their feedback so you can really get the sense of what our customers are already saying about this new material handler. And finally, we want to hear from you throughout today's broadcast. Leave some comments there on the YouTube uh, on YouTube there. We're going to address questions and we're going to share some of those comments at the end of uh, our broadcast here for today. But let's get things started. We want to introduce you to this new material handler. And for us to do that, we're going to send it over to our worldwide product manager, Brent Udemark, to kick us off. Brett? Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everyone, and thank you again for joining us today. We're very excited to have you with us for this virtual product launch. And I'm going to start off a little bit with some brief uh, recent history on our material handler product lineup. So this is about our Caterpillar designed and built wheeled material handlers. I'll take you back to the 2016 timeframe. And you can see on the smaller end of our wheeled material handler lineup, we have at that time the M318 DMH and the M322 DMH. Now on this smaller end of the wheeled product line, we've been producing these machines for over two decades now. These size of machines are ideally suited for your recycling, waste transfer stations, smaller scrap yards, so we have a, a pretty long legacy here in terms of those smaller wheeled material handlers. Then on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the M325DLMH. So this was our larger wheeled material handling machine. It was a machine that was very well received in the industry. I have a lot of customers out there with a, a lot of those machines still running ours today. However, at that point, we were going through a, a period of many emissions updates at Caterpillar, and we did elect at that time to discontinue that model there in the 2016 timeframe. So if I move forward a little bit from that, we took the smaller part of our lineup and we changed over to our new tier four final emissions machines with the MH3022 and the MH3024. So those machines brought some new features and benefits as we launched them, as well as I said, the, uh, the latest level in emissions technology. And then taking that further forward, we separated actually the smallest machine into two purpose-built machines around the MH3022 and MH3024. Again, machines that are really very well suited for those recycling and transfer station uh, operations, as well as moving into smaller scrap operations along with that MH3026 that you see. However, during that time period, we certainly heard from our customers as well that they were looking for replacement on that M325D LMH size of machine. And that, that machine was really a, a critical size that was needed to continue to run their operations. And they wanted to see us uh, bring back a product. So we've spent the last couple of years working around what it would look like to replace the M325. And at this point, I can uh, switch over to a live stream from our demonstration center in Edwards, Illinois. And with that, I am pleased to launch our new MH3040. Thank you, Brent. And powered by a C7 engine, Caterpillar engine, this machine has 204 horsepower under the hood. All the power to move uh, grapple, scrap, and logs. Um, this grapple is one and a quarter um, orange peel grapple. Uh, that machine can actually handle up to two cubic yards uh, grapple, depending on the density of the materials, and uh, for the wood application, up to 8,000 pounds. Operating weight of that machine is uh, up to 85,000 pounds or close to 40,000 uh, metric tons, uh, hence the name MH3040. 
look at the reach of that machine. We got over the 50 feet reach, over the 15 meters of reach for that machine. And really, uh, when we designed that uh, machine, uh, we had three main goals uh, for this program. First and foremost was to have proven reliability that you expect from a Caterpillar machine. So that was a key point for throughout the development of that machine to make sure that whatever we do, uh, we regain and we have the reliability you can count on. But also, as mentioned before, we jumped from a tier three engine on the M325D LMH to a, a tier four final now. And uh, with all the update on the engine and efficiency gain that we get, we can claim today that we've got up to 25% lower fuel consumption. So a drastic improvement, uh, keeping the same performance uh, in, and even improving the performance of that machine, we have a uh, drastic uh, fuel reduction. The third main point of the development and goal for this development was to reduce drastic, drastically the uh, maintenance cost. So we could reach up to 20% lower uh, maintenance cost, uh, mainly th uh, thanks to the uh, commonality with the next generation platform of today's uh, excavators. To go more in detail, I'm going to hand it over to Matt, our product application specialist for North America, uh, to go more in details into the reliability point of view. Matt? Thanks, Vincent. I'm going to walk us through that proven reliability part a little bit more here. So the MH3040 is built with proven components. We're leveraging components from our M325 DLMH, uh, that legacy product out there, our next generation uh, cab design, as well as our next generation excav excavator components. So I'm going to walk you through that a little bit more. So it starts with the, the undercarriage on this machine. So the MH3040 is leveraging the undercarriage from the M325 DLMH. This undercarriage has been used in the, in the field for over 20 years, reliable, durable, and also rebuildable for our customers as well as they look for multiple lives out of these machines. The upper platform, we're going to leverage our next generation excavator components. That's where you're going to find an EH valve or electrohydraulic valve system, our C7.1 engine, as well as some electric fans. This is going to provide standard reversing capability. Um, nice to keep those, clean, those cores clean for you. And then for the cab, we're leveraging our next generation excavator cab. This has been on the market for a little bit over three years now. Um, completely redesigned cab, much more ergonomic to, to enter and exit. One thing you'll notice by looking at this picture, and we're going to show you in just in a sec, there's no steering wheel in this machine. So we're going to have standard joystick steering. Um, this really helps when navigating yards. Um, also, it's going to provide you better visibility out the front. So as an operator, you know, this is your 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 daily office, right? You're going to spend 10, 12 hours here in a day, hopefully shorter. Um, but you want that visibility so you can see what you're actually doing. For the front or for the cab riser, we're going to leverage the cab riser from the M325 DLMH. Um, this has been a great cab for cab riser for us. Very stable, durable, reliable. Something new on this machine, since we're going to those EH electrohydraulic valves and electric hydraulic system, we're not going to have pilot lines going up and down this cab riser. That's one less thing you have to worry about in maintenance. And then lastly, we talk about the, the front linkage. On this machine at first launch, we'll have one material handler boom available and two drop no stick options. Vincent mentioned it earlier, 52, 51 feet of reach with our, our long drop no stick and then 48 feet of reach, 47 feet of reach with our short drop no stick. And that's the MH3040 there for you. So what we want to transition to next is a, a quick customer testimonial. Uh, we had a customer here in Southern Illinois help us validate this product. Uh, long time M325 DLMH customer of ours. And um, what we want to do is, is share their first impressions with you. They didn't think we could make the M325 DLMH a better machine, um, but I want you to, I want them to share what, what they thought of it with our MH3040. <laughs> My name is Michael Hitchcock. Um, I own, I'm the president and owner of Hitchcock Scrapyard. I've been in business for about 46 years. We started a small scrapyard with three employees. We're now currently around 50. In our peak, I think we run 10,000 tons of scrap a month. We got six material handlers, three of them are wheeled, three of them are crawler. I think the entire yard is 100% Caterpillar. So when the 3040s was coming out, I thought they could never improve on the 325D. So I proved that they're that and more. It's an awesome machine. I've ran that 3040, and it ain't just a little upgrade, it's a huge upgrade. The performance of the machine is outstanding. It's unreal how fast it really is. It's very touch sensitive, so it operates very smoothly. The stability, 
is very good. I can pick something up, take it, put it in front of me, and drive it around without any tipping whatsoever. Very secure and steady. The grapple is uh, very, very fast on this machine. Open and close time is a matter of just a few seconds. All of your cylinders are enclosed with covers. It has a cover over your swing gear where you won't hurt anything there. You don't have to worry about bumping the cylinders and blowing a line or something. It's very fuel efficient. I'd go two full days without going to the fuel barrel. And that saves our boss money. <laughs> The 3040 would run the two full days and have a quarter tank left in it. So we're really excited about the fuel consumption. The handrails are more secure. The step on the bottom, put an extra step on where it's very close to ground, you get up easier. And all the grading and everything is very nice. As far as the cab is concerned, sitting in it is very, very comfortable. Uh, you got lots of arm room. Well, no steering wheel makes it great because you get all that leg room. Cameras are the bomb. The backup camera has the cameras on the side also. It makes it very visible to see people, machines, vehicles, whatever it may be. The computer touch screen in it, you just touch what you want, it comes right up on the screen. You can program the joysticks according to what you feel is the best for you. As far as like the maintenance of the machine, it's set up very nice and easy. The greasing of it is so handy. You can get on the ground, machine in a position, and reach everything from the ground. We have a pretty good relationship with a local dealer and Al Torper. We buy a machine, we usually don't have a lot of problems. So to part when we do have a problem, the guys are quick to react and the parts availability at Caterpillar has been real well also. It's a very nice machine set up beautifully. It's hard to believe they made something smoother and faster than the 325Ds. This is truly a sweet machine. Hearing from satisfied customers. That's what brings us to work every day, isn't it? And it was just an awesome, the bomb. I love that. That was the best part of that video. I feel what he says, that's the bomb. So we saw from that customer, and I'm joined now here by Vincent. You've just heard from him and we'll hear from Matt here in just a minute. Uh, we, we, we saw an application there that was a scrap yard. The MH3040 has a lot of other applications that can be used for probably even mill yards, correct? Absolutely. I mean, we developed that uh, machine in mind uh, to be primarily for a scrap yard, but also for mill yard operation. We're going to offer a shorter stick and a configuration that is a uh, purpose built for million operation as well as our front attachment you saw the orange peel grapple that we have the gsh 425 we offer it also uh, with a five times and uh, for the forestry and uh, million operation uh, logging sawmill or uh, wood processing plant uh, we offer today the uh, gll 55 and gll 60 uh, specifically designed for a million operation well, Vincent, I know that uh, you and Matt have already talked through some of the features of this machine, but you really got to hop up into the cab, walk around this whole machine. And I think our folks there are joining us from home here are wanting to see the same thing. So let's take a walk around this new MH3040. As a direct replacement of the M325D LMH for scribe or milliard operation, we're excited to present the new MH3040. Based on the next generation excavator platform, this 40 metric ton material handler is built with proven components, lower the fuel consumption, lower the maintenance costs. I turn over now to Matt, who's gonna go into more details. Matt, it's all yours. Thanks, Vincent. The MH3040 delivers the durability and reliability you can count on by utilizing proven Caterpillar components and structures. Let's take a closer look. Boom, stick, and other high-stress areas are reinforced with thick multi-plate fabrications, castings, and forgings to ensure quality and reliability. The MH3040 delivers the numbers by being able to operate up to a two-yard orange peel grapple and scrap and over 7,000 pounds of wood in milliard applications. Utilizing the same boom and stick from the M325 DLMH, the MH3040 can be transported with the stick attached. An optional 20K solid state generator expands capabilities and provides power for a magnet. Swing speed has improved by 12%, providing faster cycle times. An industry tested wheeled undercarriage balances mobility and stability in the toughest applications. 
Then H3040 keeps more money in your pocket by offering up the 25% lower fuel consumption with its fuel-efficient CAT C7.1 engine and electro-hydraulic valves. Standard auto-reversing electric fans eliminate parasitic loads on the engine and keep cores clean without interrupting work. Selectable power modes allow you to match your machine to the job. Smart mode automatically adjusts engine and hydraulic power to working conditions to save fuel. Power mode constantly provides maximum productivity. The MH3040 extends savings by offering up the 20% lower maintenance costs. Electro-hydraulic controls eliminate the need for pilot lines and filters, drastically reducing the number of hydraulic hoses and fittings. The new hydraulic oil filter provides improved filtration performance and longer filter life. The MH3040 cab sets a new standard for the industry. It has been completely redesigned to enhance comfort, optimize visibility, and ensure safe operation. The first thing you'll notice when entering the cab is the tip-up left console. This design makes it easier to enter and exit. A lot of thought went into the layout of this cab. Controls are intuitively placed so they're in front of you. There's no need to reach behind to adjust the radio or over to the right-hand side to adjust your climate control. This cab has an automatic climate control system that can be run through the monitor and also has a heated and ventilated seat so it keeps you comfortable all shift long. Looking out the front, you'll notice that the steering wheel has been removed. Standard joystick steering improves front visibility, increases cab entrance width, and provides more room for your legs. The joysticks on this MH3040 are programmable. With a few simple clicks on the screen, an operator can customize the joysticks for their operating preference. Operator ID saves their preferences. The heart of this cab is the 10-inch touchscreen monitor. It displays vital machine health information as well as feeds from the standard rear view and right-hand side view cameras, allowing for safer machine operation. Well, there you have it. That's the MH3040. Thank you, Matt. That was very good information. Together with a range of Caterpillar work tools and grappers, the MH3040 is a reliable, efficient, and productive solution for your yard. Call on your Caterpillar dealer rep right away for more information. Great information there from Vincent here to my left and to my far side there. That's Matt. You've seen them on the videos. You've heard from them so far today. Now it's your time where you've left us some comments, some questions, things like that in the comments section here on YouTube. And we're going to get to as many of those questions as we can here over the next few minutes. But let's start with probably the question at everybody's at the top of everybody's minds who's joined us here today is when will the MH3040 start arriving at CAT dealers here in North America? Well, as you can see behind us, I mean, we've got the first machine already here. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. It's beautiful. <laughs> the uh, kind of the next available machine would arrive in North America by uh, early August, we would say that. And it's uh, ready uh, for order. Awesome. So you heard it there. You can head out to your cat dealer at any time and start to check out this new MH3040. So um, we have Troy Carroll as well joining us. He is um, sitting behind the scenes monitoring the comments. So he'll be jumping in from time to time with some questions and uh, comments that, that are coming in through the stream here on YouTube. So we'll continue with some of these other questions. Uh, you've mentioned in some of the videos and other things that uh, this MH3040 uses utilizes an electro-hydraulic uh, hydraulic system. So what are some of the benefits of having that type of hydraulic system? Yeah, really three major benefits there. Uh, first is going to be a saving in, in fuel efficiency or fuel consumption. So with the electrohydraulic valves, uh, we're much more efficiently able to move hydraulic fluid around this machine. We can ramp up that engine, ramp up that pump when the demand is high, and then also idle it down when it's low. So that's going to save you fuel. Um, the next thing is going to be lowering your operating costs. So with our EH machines, you will find a reduced amount of uh, fluid on board. So there's less fluid you have to change. Um, less fittings, less hoses, less things to worry about there. And probably the third thing and, and what operators like most is the controllability they have with the machine. So uh, with an EH machine, you're able to change uh, preferences very quickly, how you want the machine to modulate or any adjustments or even the joysticks. If you want to be able to program a, a button on the joystick to do a certain function, you're able to do that all through the touchscreen monitor. Uh, no need to plug an ET or anything of that sort. And we got Keith here with us. So I'm going to turn it over to Keith for a sec. Keith, maybe walk us through that as an operator. I know you've spent a lot of time in EH machines here at Caterpillar. Maybe talk through some of those benefits or what like what you like to do and set up with this machine. Yeah, Matt. Um, so on these new EH, EH machines, like you say, the controllability uh, to be able to program the sticks and the controls and 
like I say, if I want to drive on my left side, if I want it on my right side, you know, we don't have a steering wheel anymore. So a lot of guys, I would say, would want it on the right. So they're not swinging the house and trying to steer at the same time. Um, if I want to mute my radio or answer my phone, I can set that up for buttons. Um, I can set my controllability as far as um, how fast of inputs I have. Um, say if I'm just stockpiling material, I want to put it up on fast speed. So I can put, go ahead and put my response speed on fast. Um, that'll go ahead and let me, the more input I put on the stick, the faster this machine will go. If I put it on slow, it's going to be slow everything down a little bit. So if I'm loading trucks, maybe I want to be a little more precise with everything. It's right here in the screen. I can just tap the button. Done. So it's easy, quick. Like I say, if I, want, if I don't know what I got, push the info button. All these things on the screen here, I can adjust every one of them or change every one of them to my, to my preference. So it's very handy, very nice to have. And like you say, with the EH, no more pilot lines, no more pilot uh, heat in the cab. All the yeah, lines run in there. Uh, legs get warm about 10 o'clock in the morning. You're already starting to bake. So no more <laughs> of that. A lot more room in here, actually, too. Yeah, and, and one thing, too, operator ID, maybe you can talk to us real quick on that because mm -hmm. I think that's something that saves your preferences for you, right? Sure, yep. Yeah, it's real easy. You get in the machine. Uh, it'll ask you right off the right out of the gate what's uh, what your passcode is or you want to just guess. So you can put your own number in there, your own uh, your own letters, if you will. Um, you want a passcode, 1234. It's got to set up your own specific way. Uh, if I want to go, you know, set up this one here is the one I have set. It automatically switches it. All my stuff is right here. So now I've got everything just the way I want. Like I said, my radio mute, my wipers are on one. Everything's ready to go. Yeah, it's, that's pretty slick. Um, and, you know, one thing on that, too, as an operator, you know, when you get in the cab in the morning, um, you know, you don't have to reset those, right? It's going to save nope. it. So that's one benefit that we've heard a lot from customers. I no longer have to change my preferences when I jump in and out of the cab. It, it knows exactly how I want to operate that machine. So that's, that's kind of those, those three major advantages there of the EH system. Awesome. And Keith, while we have you here, um, kind of talk about just operating this machine versus all the other next gen machines that you've operated here at Caterpillar out of the demonstration and learning center here in Edwards. Uh, cab is pretty much exactly the same minus your, uh, your sticks up front for your drive. You've got your, your uh, forward reverse pedal and your brake pedal down here. Uh, but other than that, controls are pretty much the same. A couple little extra buttons on these controls, uh, Everything on the on the right side of the machine and forward of the machine is all identical to an excavator. So if you guys have been on the, you know, the wheelies um, coming out, the new MH, the small ones, the, the 336s, 349, doesn't matter. You can hop in this cab and all the controls are exactly the same. That's awesome. And it's it, it just shows, again, the, the, the collaboration happening within Caterpillar. So it can make our customers easily jump in between machines if they need to. But a lot of times somebody operates these machines for, for, for hours on a, uh, at a time. It's not a machine you just hop in for 20 minutes and hop back out. Is that right, guys? Exactly. Yeah, this is a, a machine that you know, is going to be dedicated on a site. Um, some of our customers are running these 24-7. Some may be working one shift, two shift, depending on the operation and the needs. The seat actually on the cab is more comfortable than our seat in the office. <laughs> the seat is heated, ventilated, and very comfortable. <laughs> Outstanding. And and, and it, it just goes with all the other great features that come on the MH3040. So I'm going to actually bring in our partner from behind the scenes here, Troy Carroll. Troy, uh, can you give us some of the feedback that we're seeing out on the YouTube channel, as well as, you know, if we have some questions from our uh, audience members out there. Sure thing. Uh, question on Millyard. Will there, will there be a log loader boom and stick available in the future? Well, at the beginning, we're going to introduce with a shorter stick, uh, kind of an 18 feet stick from, from memory. And uh, we are developing uh, log loggers uh, configuration that will come in the coming, uh, in the coming months. Also, uh, mill yard uh, um, from the M325, uh, BMH mill yard machine uh, have what improvements have we done uh, on this machine improving from that uh, the old the old M325. Well, the improvement we're going to keep the same undercarriage with the same type of wheels. Uh, the rest is as we uh, talked before, exactly similar to this one. All the upper frame uh, will be with uh, using the uh, next generation components, uh, and the boom and stick are similar to the M325 DNMH. 
those are uh, the two questions that I had. All right. Thanks, Troy. And, you know, we have Brent joining us. He's our worldwide product manager. And Brent, just a question for you and your team that that really designed this machine. Kind of talk about how you thought about the customer when bringing this machine back to life and and really this uh, j just the type of machine that we're bringing to the market here, starting here in North America. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. So Matt walked through some of this in, in his presentation before, really looking to the customer of what, what did the customers appreciate and what helped them keep their operations going efficiently with that previous M325 DLMH and carrying those parts of that machine forward so that we could keep that, uh, that durability, that reliability, the, the pieces of that that our customers really valued. And then at the same time, transitioning into what is our next generation excavator? And a lot of things have changed since 2016 and the new technologies and features that we bring. I think it was great a little bit ago as we we sat in the cab there virtually and you know we're able to talk through the ability to do settings and adjustments in the monitor that can make this machine set up for each individual operator in the way that they like to use the machine. And those of course are the comments that we get back from our customers around you know looking for keeping operators uh, happy in the seat as matt mentioned you know it's certainly not uncommon that we have operators operating eight ten hours in a shift with the machines and then potentially machines running multiple shifts so when you move from the first operator to a second operator on uh, on the next shift and that operator has some different preferences as to how they like to run the machine utilizing things like operator id they can immediately change those preferences. They don't need to go through and set up the machine again to the way that they like to operate. So all of those things come from feedback from our customers as to what they see and value from the machine that we had previously, as well as some of those new features and uh, technology items and hydraulic improvements to help fuel. And uh, all of that really comes from the feedback that we have from customers. Awesome. Thank you, Brent, for just kind of walking us through that process. I hope our customers understand how much and how important they are, obviously, to, to this whole design process. And we're really thinking about their success when we're pulling this all together. So anything else to add, uh, Vincent or, or Matt, on, on top of what Brent was chatting about there? No, really, the uh, voice of the customer has been a key driver for this um, uh, for this program. And truly, they were customers were asking us, bring us a replacement for the M325 DLMH. We love that machine. It burns a bit of fuel, but we love the performance. And now we deliver a machine that burns less fuel and produce as much um, as much as the previous one, if not better. Uh, again, there are some details uh, in the uh, machines, like we improved the swing speed by 12%. Uh, we were just running some uh, performance tests uh, recently where, I mean, on the clock, we could uh, measure actually 12% uh, increased swing, swing speed, uh, stockpiling materials. So that was very impressive that uh, what we could deliver. So fuel efficient, more productive. I mean, this is this is gonna be a really big win for, for any customer who decides to put this into their, in, into their application into their yard so uh we we'll, again we're asking anytime we get we got that we got our keith up in the cab we've got vincent and we've got matt here for your, any questions that you have leave those questions there in the comments section on youtube and uh we've got our man troy carroll who is monitoring that for us troy any uh, any updates uh, any feedback from our attendees out there yeah jeff we got one more question uh how many user passcodes can you uh enter or save how many passcodes? Oh, uh, user IDs. <laughs> I think it's many. I don't have the yeah, I think numbers. It's, <laughs> I think yeah. it starts at fifty. Um, there was some changes there over the last few years that we as as we brought these next generation machines out, but I believe it's up to fifty now. Yeah. Um, you know, from an operator ID perspective, plenty of ID opportunities to save your preferences. Uh, most customers won't have fifty operators cycling through a machine. Maybe just a, a handful, up to a dozen. So we should have them covered there for saving those preferences. Thank you, guys. You want to talk a little bit about the serviceability of this uh, of this machine a little bit, and, and and how easy some of the access points are, and things like that. If you if you need to quickly service your machine. 
Yeah, so from a serviceability perspective, um, you know, what you'll find on, on this machine, there's grab handles, stamp steps, wherever you need to access um, those those different parts. You know, from a daily perspective, um, you're going to check your air filter maybe on a daily basis, if not every week. Um, check your oil, oil level, hydraulic level. So in most of those cases, we have hydro we have sight glasses for that. So for example, we have a hydraulic sight glass, one that you can see um, just by opening the door. No need to actually enter into the area or the compartment. Uh, the engine oil dipstick, there's no need to climb on top. You can access that from the side platform um, and the air filter. Some changes have been made there drastically. Um, this has our next generation air filter on it. So what you'll find is actually has a cyclone pre-cleaner built into the outside of it. That's going to remove any of that large debris. Then you're going to have a primary filter and then a secondary filter. And that's also going to filter out any debris as well. And with the reversing fan on this machine, that really cuts down on maintenance too. So most customers are running in pretty dusty environments, especially in those milliard operations. And that dust, the sawdust is going to get built up in there over time. So having that reversing fan is going to drastically uh, reduce the amount of stuff getting uh, getting stuck up in that um, in those cooler cores and, and that reversing fan is going to blow everything out for you and something about that that's cool too is you can actually set it on um, you know go off every every few minutes every hour uh, go off once a day or you can actually manually press it to go off as well so a lot of flexibility there with that reversing fan yeah, thanks for walking us through kind of what it would be like if for, from a servicing perspective in, in this machine. Maybe I'll send it back up to Keith real quick. Keith, you, you've operated the M325 as well before. What's your first kind of impressions as, as you hopped up into the MH3040 versus hopping up into there? We heard from the customer, you called it the bomb, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, seems like you got more room, more better visibility up here. Uh, of course, the seat, you can't beat the seat, man, it's great. Uh, all the adjustments in the world, heated and cooled, um, like saying, spend all day in here. Uh, the cab, like saying, adjust your windscreens up top. You got a nice screen for the front, um, the big wiper in the front. And like I say, all the forward controls in here. Everything's up up front in front. No more reaching behind you to get to the AC or no reaching behind you to get to the radio. You can either use your touch screen or jog dial right here on the side. Or like I say, you can program even your controls uh, on your hand grips for whatever you want. But yeah, like I say, the main thing, steering wheel's gone. You can see um, the cab seems a little bigger, a little, uh, more visibility. And like I say, the seat's great. Comfortable machine to run, definitely. Yeah, I think I want to switch seats with you. You got air conditioning <laughs> up there, right? <laughs> Troy, I want to yeah, check in back, back in a, with you. Yeah, go ahead. A few more questions uh, awesome. from up here. Uh, what is the uh, def consumption per hour average? We've got a ratio. Uh, we recommend always to top off the uh, def each time you refuel the um, the tank. Uh, the ratio would be minimum three to one. So um, whenever you refill, uh, you need to uh, burn three tanks of fuel. You're gonna have to refill your def, but we recommend to top off the def tank um, all the time. That's minimum one to three. Yeah, and with that def too. So it's about two and a half percent. Uh, per gallon. So pretty low consumption when you think about DEF. Um, one of the lowest in the industry, especially on this engine with the C7.1. This plat this engine's used on a lot of different platforms from tractors, wheel loaders, as well as on our excavators as well. So this is very low consumption uh, for DEF. Another question on the uh, cooling package. Is the uh, oil water cooler still back to back? No, everything's going to be a single plane um, on that that cooling package. Um, the only thing that will be, um, I guess, kind of have a second plane, if that makes sense, would be your AC condenser core there. So that's something that will be out in front of the other cores of that cooling package as well. So that's the only thing that's out. Everything else will be a single plane. And that's why we're able to use those reversing fans uh, with that cooling package. One of the key also talking about the cooling system uh, is that all the fan are electrical. So uh, we've got up to seven different uh, electrical fan that can cool down the area that needs to be cooled. Uh, so that's a drastic improvement. And that comes from, again, commonality with the next generation uh, truck excavators. And uh, we have those electrical fans, so completely different uh, cooling system than the previous uh, M325 DLMH that allow us to cool down the area that needs to be cooled down. That, that impact also the efficiency, the fuel efficiency uh, of that machine. Another question. Uh... When will there be a track version for Milliard high and wide? 
That's a good question. Uh, and we constantly uh, look after any uh, opportunities to sell more machines. Uh, but we notice that uh, more and more the uh, mill yard and uh, specifically mill yard and scrap yard, uh, specifically the scrap yard, sorry, are turning our uh, paved road, I mean, throughout the world. And uh, that's why the priority number one to bring to the market uh, our wheeled uh, version. And as I said, we continuously uh, look for opportunities to sell more machines. So, but so far, uh, this is what we bring to the market today. Another question, uh, what is the price? Huh, the price, here comes the question of the price. <laughs> And uh, I mean, I can start and Brent, uh, I mean, uh, you uh, weave in if you, if you need to, uh, but um, we started the, first of all, I mean, the price will be uh, handled by our Caterpillar dealers. So if you need to, uh, if you want a quote, just uh, contact your Caterpillar dealers. Uh, they have the possibility to uh, provide you a quote uh, almost immediately. But uh, we start from the M325 DLMH. Remember that that was a TS3, engine uh, label. No, we jump to a tier four final. Uh, there are some development costs uh, uh, included into it. And uh, you heard all the drastic improvement we had. So uh, call on your dealers uh, if you want more details. That was my best advice. I don't know if Brent, if you want to comment further on that. Nothing additional to add, Vincent. That is, uh, that's correct. We're, we're building off that machine. We have some emissions changes that uh, that will drive uh, some level of, of pricing increase versus the, the 325 m325 that we had back in 2016 but uh, the dealers can get that quoted up for you well th thank you that's all the questions i have up here uh, in the office awesome thanks mm -hmm. troy and uh you know we, we, we see the orange peel grapple on this right now. Talk about maybe some of the other tools that can be connected into this uh, into this MH3040. Yeah, so I mean, most popular, if you want to zoom in on that orange peel there, I mean, that by far is going to be the most popular grapple uh, or popular type of grapple here on the the MH3040 when you see it go into scrap operations. Um, Vincent talked a little bit about the mill yard arrangement and, and some grapples there, but um, this is our GSH 425. This is a one and a quarter yard grapple. As Vincent mentioned before, we can go up to a two yard grapple on this machine, uh, depending on the density of that material. But with this cat grapple, what you'll find is that we're using horizontal cylinders, um, we're using our horizontal cylinders. So what happens there is those cylinders become protected. And when they're protected like that, there's there's no scrap getting in there, maybe again, nicking a cylinder or a line of any sort. Um, so this is going to help with uptime. Also on the tips, you'll find cast tips that are replaceable. You can easily weld those on and weld those off. And also you can kind of see just how it, it's set up right there. Um, it's going to open and close at a 90 degree angle. So it's really going to penetrate that pile of material. Um, it, it really goes in that pile at that 90 degree. It's going to give you better fill factor, better penetration. And then it's also going to help keep that material in the grapple as well. So very popular in scrap. Sometimes you will see magnets on these machines. You, you saw in the video a little bit, we offer up to a 20 kW uh, generator on this machine. That's going to be a solid state generator, hydraulically driven uh, that can you know power pretty much at any magnet you really want. I think up to what, 80, 80 inches or something like that just really depends on the consumption of that magnet but um that would be very typical in your your scrap operations as well awesome sounds like a lot of fun i i, I don't you want to keep your distance from that and thinking about that talk about maybe some of the safety features that, that you'll find on this machine as well yeah so standard on the mh3040 you're going to find a rear rear view camera and right side camera um, that's going to provide visibility to the rear and right side all the time uh, something we like on that monitor is that you're able to see those camera feeds easily adjust those with a flick of a finger on the screen um, but also you're going to see the health of the machine so that that's key as well as an operator you always want to know your know, fuel level definitely level, if you're running hot, cold, hydraulic pressure, you're able to keep all that up there uh, as well as see those camera feeds. Yeah, I think we got a view of it here, um, but really provides a great view of that, um, that that camera feed and what that looks like. Very crisp, clean. Um, fun fact on those I found out over the years is actually they're heated. So if you're, you know, up in Canada, it gets a little cold, maybe not too cold, um, <laughs> but it's going to, it's actually going to melt that ice and snow off the camera for you. So you have that, that view as well for you. No need to go out there and scrape it off. Maybe one more point about serviceability, the service platform has been increased in the width uh, so that uh, when we need to access some components in the uh, upper frame, uh, those service platform have been, ex uh, have been extended um, slightly so to get even more comfort providing the three point of contact wherever you need to go. 
Oh, thanks, Vincent. Thanks, Matt. And we are we have more questions. Is that right, uh, Troy? That, that is correct. Uh, awesome. Uh, what does our horizon look for a larger machine, and also uh, of a not only a larger machine, a track machine? I can take that uh, that one on. Uh, the uh, as I said, I mean, we constantly uh, look at that. Uh, any machine development takes uh, enough time to validate their performance and validate the reliability of those products. So, uh, this is the first uh, uh, machine introduction for the larger material lenders. I'm gonna have to be patient uh, if and when uh, we bring some other machines in the market. And before you go to your next question, Troy, I mean, just to reflect, though, I mean, this, this this machine was brought on by customer feedback. So the customers, if, you, if you've got that feedback, we want to hear it from you. And and as Brent talked about, it went all into the design factor of it as well. So it, your voice is always being heard. I'll just say that if you are a customer at Caterpillar. Uh, Vincent, uh, talk about when the... Uh, 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 the technology side, the e-fence, the... Uh, um, yes, specifically uh, payload management. Uh, That's uh, thank you for the for the question. I was just uh, looking at the uh, at Troy. Um, as probably most of you know already, uh, on the um, track uh, traditional excavators, we introduced this next generation with uh, tons of new technology, uh, cat grade control, payload system, uh, e fencing system, and so on. Uh, because of the customer feedback and request to bring the MH3040 uh, as soon as possible to replace the uh, aging population of M325 DNMH, uh, we decided to bring that machine as it is now. Uh, it does not have, offer the whole range of uh, technology that you have have on the uh, standard uh, track excavators, but it's in the plant and uh, in the very few coming months, uh, we will have uh, that it's uh, offering also those uh, e-fence uh, system. Payload system is a bit more complicated uh, with a grapper uh, comp compared to a bucket application, uh, just from the uh, technicality of it uh, to know and to have an accurate weight of it. But remember, this is of the base of a next generation platform. So it's all electro hydraulically controlled. So just that fact opened the door to many, many uh, future development in the future. It's, it's a machine with a future, definitely. And uh, we will have some update and new development that will come to market in the coming months. Got another uh, mill yard question. Uh, sure. When will there be a straight stick available for a heel rack application? Yeah, so that's the... Uh, maybe more in the near future, uh, where we'll be developing the uh, heel rack and uh, to be very similar uh, to the uh, forestry line of uh, our machines. And uh, we will have this heel rack. Um, when everything goes right, when the validation proved to be uh, where we want to be, uh, we are talking uh, in the next, uh, I would say, six to 12 months uh, maximum. Thank you. That's, uh, that's all the questions I have for now. I was thinking maybe send it back up to Keith. Keith, that's a raised cab. What was what's it like going up and down and 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 being able to operate with uh, you know, in, in the in this new uh, next gen cab and 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 having a raised cab too. Well, the raised cab is great. It's off the three twenty five platforms, which is very very sturdy, very uh, stable cab, uh, very uh, stable cab riser. Um, being able to go up, move any position while you're still operating, uh, it's very smooth. Uh, being able to get up above everything, you can still operate, move around, uh, not a problem. Like I say, you can drive around with it up in the air. You don't have to worry about tipping. Very stable, not rocking around. Um, when we drop down, it's very, it's very smooth, very quick. Um, like I say, going up, get up where you need to be, work all day, see all, everything around you. A lot more visibility out of these cabs too so very comfortable i think keith's ready to hop out of here and go work in a scrap or what do you think matt <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think so <laughs> he's very skilled up there and uh we want to thank everybody who was able to join us today for the unveiling of the new mh3040 this is an exciting new machine next generation platform from caterpillar and you can find it at your local cat dealer if you want to look more uh find out more information about this product we encourage you to head out to cat.com you can read a lot more about it and uh, we just appreciate you joining us today as we bring you the new next generation mh3040 for jeff muniz for vincent for matt and the rest of our crew here we again thank you for joining us have a great and safe day <laughs>